Well, welcome back, everybody. Uh, I'm Jack. If you don't know that, you're at the wrong conference. I just have to tell you. Uh, this is going to be a very exciting session. Uh, this is going to be about geojournalism, and I'm joined here by two amazing geojournalists, or uh, facsimiles of the same. It's uh, Jim Fallows uh, on my right, editor at Atlantic Magazine, and also an extraordinary geojournalist. And also Gary Nell, back in the Anirondacks. Are you at Gary right now? Uh, who used to be CEO of National Geographic Society uh, Partners, which was at, uh, of course, at Disney until very, very recently. But um, this is going to be a wonderful conversation. Jim, uh, before we get started, could I share with these people this amazing geojournalistic trip that you've been on? Uh, I mean, well, if you twist my arm, yes. If I twist your arm, no. <laughs> HBO has been doing a special on Jim and his wife, Deb. Uh, as they travel around to little cities in America. Can we roll that right now so you guys can get a fam familiar background to what Jim and Deb have been doing? Almost every place we went, people said, the U.S. is really in horrible shape. But here, things are really moving ahead. What's your secret? We all come together. If it can happen here in the poorest of all states, then the positive things are replicable elsewhere. The story of my town is the American story of this era. So, so the backstory is, of course, that, that uh, with your guidance and with help with Esri, some of our, our maps, we traveled around to smaller town America, you know, starting eight years ago and reporting on the face of the country that wasn't really covered by national news. Mm -hmm. and the whole thing's on HBO Max now. So, so That's good. So would you like to know what I think of as the connection between that film and the larger mission for Esri and the GIS community in general? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I'll ask both both you and, and Gary about it because you're both so such crucial practitioners. Here is the big picture as I think of it. The way human beings have always understood their world is through stories. Yes. The story, stories, the uh, paintings people would make on the caves long ago, the poems that people would recite to each other in, in, uh, in ancient uh, Greece, the early newspapers that were passed around. Some of the audience may have seen the recent Tom Hanks movie, News of the World where his job was to travel from city to city in northern Texas after the Civil War and read newspapers to people who didn't otherwise have any news. And we've seen each decade there's some new augmentation in the way that those stories are told. The coming of print, the coming of, of photographs, the coming of maps, and now the popularization of maps. And so, to my mind, we, and, and the reason I mention that with the movie is for Deb and me as writers, seeing our message re-envisioned as this beautiful video production was, was a whole imaginative new step. So Gary, as the longtime leader of, is, is a longtime leader of one of the organizations that has epitomized how you combine uh, print reporting and photographs and cartography to have new stories about the world. And you lead an organization that is just on the cusp of empowering millions of people around the world with the ability to amplify these stories with, um, with, with, with maps. And so I think the, the agenda, uh, here's my hypothesis now for, for you to, to answer. There's a sort of dual agenda we have when it comes to maps and storytelling, geojournalism. One is to find ways to make this much more accessible, much more popular, much more natural for people like me in the journalism world. The other, is to recognize the responsibility that people like you have to make sure this tool is used honestly and productively so that the stories we have about the world are honest stories. That's my proposition. What, say, <laughs> what do you say? Yeah, that's a very exciting conversation. I mean, uh, let's talk about the definition of geojournalism. Yep. It's really about storytelling yep. about geographic stuff. Yeah. Which is all stuff, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but seeing journalistic uh, stories told through a map view or a geographic view seems to be uh, interesting to people. I mean, the way I see maps is that they are stories. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Gary, Gary, you may have a different thought about this, but uh, it's, in a way, maps are the uh, language of geography. They tell stories about place, they tell stories about circumstances. And, uh, you know, Gil, Gil Grosner, who uh, was the, he was the great grandson of Alexander Graham Bell, started the National Geographic Society, once spent about an hour telling me that uh, National Geographic 
is about creating geographic knowledge through all the exploration and so forth, and then disseminating geographic knowledge, which was the magazine and uh, all of the photos later jo joining it and so forth. Th this was kind of a, uh, I'll just phrase it, uh, exploring and explaining, yeah. <laughs> a double yeah. E sort of proposition. And uh, for our users, in many ways, they are explorers. They're exploring mm -hmm. geography digitally uh, and they're telling stories through maps uh, explaining. Yeah. And sometimes they don't think about the, the role of maps as an explanatory or a storytelling thing. They're just making their maps, you know, the water lines and sewer lines, <laughs> land uses and so forth. But my God, they are, they are the embodiment of, of uh, you know, rich stories. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I can talk on and on about this, but Gary, you should yes. be talking, not me. Well, as my cultural font of um, all wisdom, Spider-Man likes to say, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> so, um, but I, I think, Jack, you're, you're absolutely right. And I think this dual proposition that Jim uh, threw out um, is, is critically important. You know, National Geographic just historically has reinvented itself many times over. It's 130 plus years old now, started in text, broke through in photography, broke through in videography, into social media. A lot of the people at the conference may not know it's the largest Instagram uh, platform in the world, over 150 million <laughs> followers on Instagram, more than Kim, you know, just about up to Kim Kardashian. Um, so we're, we're just about there, two of the Kardashians we're, we're ahead of. So it's, um, <laughs> it's a huge platform. Um, and with map making, I think we're on the cusp now through technology and through the brilliant work of everyone at this conference, driven by uh, Esri and GIS, that uh, that storytelling capacity to create a visual literacy uh, and invent a visual literacy creates massive opportunities uh, for the future and, and incredible responsibilities for all of you at the conference as, you know, as owners and citizens of this technology. Yeah, it, I wonder if I could ask both of you a question about sort of the expanding opportunity part of the equation here. I'm thinking of my colleagues in the journalism world who are writing for newspapers, they're writing for magazines, they're writing online posts. And they slash we have learned over the decades how to include photos. Our photos are not as good as a National Geographic professional photographer, but there's something we can illustrate. We've learned how to record audio with tape uh, recorders or digital recorders. We've learned how to include videos. We still don't really know how to make maps, maps that are not as elegant as one of your cartographers might produce over a month or two's work, but something that could illustrate right now how to think about wildfires in California, how to think about um, migration and the pandemic, how to think about any of the news stories we as journalists cover. I think the barrier is mainly cultural on journalist side mm -hmm. and not sort of grabbing the tools you all have made available. But, but, but first, Gary, and then Jack, how do you think this cultural connection between journalists and, and the world that GIS is making possible, how can that synapse be, be closed or connected? Well, first of all, let me tell you that I love journalists. I was one myself early on in my career, um, and I've certainly been around many and supervised newsrooms and others in the past. Um, it, they're not as open to change as some other folks are. And I think, I think Jim, um, you know, there's a bit of a, you know, you get brilliant text. It's very hard to make the transition to social media. It took a long time. Um, and, but now it's like, you know, National Geographic, we used, to, we would like to say, is a digital media company that happens to publish a magazine, right? So <laughs> I think that, I think now, what I would urge people to answer your question, you know, as I ponder about this, photographs have made that news. If you think about that napalm child that c captured Vietnam and is burned into your brain, or um, the Afghan girl on the cover of National Geographic about the refugee crisis of 30 some years ago, 40 years ago, um, what is the map? that is gonna stick with us? How do we create that map that's gonna capture climate change and be stuck as an image uh, for forever uh, with the population you're serving? 
Yeah, well, the big map, yeah. of course, in, in recent times has been the COVID map by John Hopkins. Yep. And it was looked at, as I mentioned, I think yesterday, two trillion times, reaching just about half of the world's audience. And that medium isn't just a map, it's a dashboard showing the charts and the graphs and the whole characterization. And also what's occurring with those dashboards is they're becoming interactive. So I can actually use them as interactive exploratory uh, systems. This isn't gonna work in the print media, of course, but what it will do is uh, acquaint people with this uh, phenomenal information. Yeah, I'm just looking here at this uh, map that's just been brought up. Yeah. It's uh, now over, you can see the statistics right away. It's shocking, you know, four million people have died. Right away you get it. Yeah. Uh, th three, something like 3% of our world has been infected. And that, that, uh, that, that set the tone. Now, there was a little cartoon, I can't remember, in the New Yorker about these big waves. You know, the big wave of COVID was one wave, and then there was another wave right behind it of climate change and another one of biodiversity, you know, kind of overlaying on top of each other. And uh, it, it's extraordinary what we must, as map makers and GIS and science people, uh, be responsible for. We have to tell the world, just like we did with COVID, of how it's all interrelated and how, you know, uh, so anyway, that that to me was the map of uh, yeah. our of our decade. If you're if you're asking me that question, Gary, I, I think it's. Uh, but there'll be lots more, and you know, for local people, their local map of of uh, you know it was in Los Angeles. Uh, you know, it was it affected more people here than there in Chicago. It affected more people here than there, and and the implications of that uh, for racial equity or for where we're spending money or all those kind of things are, are about to explode, I think, from a, from a map maker's perspective uh, so that the population will become increasingly literate. I mean, that map made people spatially literate, made them think, made them understand what the big issue was, made them uh, contemplate why. You know, why did it, where did it happen? It happened in uh, Wuhan and then it spread here and then the airplane went there and somebody got it over there. Spa we are spatially literate, actually, but I think the maps actually are bringing it out. And from a journalist perspective, these are great stories to tell. Uh, I, I just want to go back to what I said before, uh, Jim, is that I don't think a lot of our GIS users are conscious mm. that they are storytellers. And uh, inherent, I mean, we have these little mappy hours yeah. and, you know, are the colors right or the symbols right or something like that. By God, the, the basic thing is the story itself, yeah. you know, being able to explain things. Yeah. And uh, making things easy to understand is the job of a journalist. I mean, reading all of the stuff that you write or, yeah. or uh, Gary inside of the magazine or inside of the, uh, the TV shows of, of National Geographic, it's all about explaining reality and that storytelling. And, and you're well knowing about it. So I, I want to birth uh, a new talent uh, among GIS users, which is about storytelling. And I did, you know, when, when I went to college, uh, don't laugh here, but uh, nobody, uh, I, didn't, I didn't take a class on, on explaining things. I took a class on economics, I took a class on geography, I took a class on design, but there was nobody that taught a class, how do you uh, explain a complex situation? So the last month or two, I've been deep in my cave trying to figure out all this technology and make it understandable that somebody actually could, could listen to my, my talk yesterday and understand all of this complex technology in a simple way. Uh, as cartographers, as geographers, as GIS professionals who are serving other people, we need to learn better how to explain things, and our cartography shouldn't just be full of stuff all over the maps, they should be about very clearly telling the story. Well, that's what's made, I think, Enrique's work, which you had earlier today, Jack, Enrique Sala's work so brilliant, um, or yeah. Paul Salopec as examples. Yeah. You know, I spoke to the National Academy of Sciences a couple of years ago, and I said to everyone, if there's one takeaway, the publishing of your scientific paper is the beginning of your storytelling, not the end.
Yes. So how how are we going to be able to, you know, how are we going to be able to translate these important findings to the average person, which will then drive interest, which will dr then drive demand and the economics of journalism at the end of the day? That is what has to happen um, in order to uh, succeed. So, so I'd like to see if we could do a segue from what Jack and Gary are both saying. And, and as sort of background for setting up my question, there's a number of uh, living atlas maps we've queued up, which you just kind of sort of display in the background without my, my explaining them. It's about this. Suppose we all succeed, that people in my world of, journalist, of journalism become more attuned to working with your, with your map makers and we we fully realize the power of using maps to explain things. I, I, I think an example that will stick in most reporters' minds is the redlining maps, yes. uh, which you know are so important in understanding the racial um, uh, heritage and segregation of big American city state. Suppose that happens, and suppose people around the world recognize that maps are the new storytelling medium for understanding our world. Mm -hmm. We've seen over the last decade, the way in which a current technological medium, that is social media, has been misused. And the stories that people hear about the world through social media are frequently, too frequently distorted, and they are false. We're at a moment in history where maps are still trusted. Maps are as authoritative a story as you can find. Right. How do you think about this moment in history for you and your colleagues? Well, I'm scared, yeah. actually. As we make story maps uh, available yeah. to normal people, like citizens, yeah. they, will, they will use it like another social media, right? And uh, we saw with social media, uh, false news yeah. just emerged and it spread very quickly. Anybody could tell it. Historically, surveyors and other mapping professionals are deeply rooted into the ethics of telling the truth. You know, the truth is this is where it's at, a location, or this is where the statistics show population growth, or this is where there's uh, you know vegetation change. Inside of the the nature of geographers and scientists of all types that are geo related is this strong ethic that uh, says, uh, you know, our job is to tell the truth. And I don't see very many false maps. I mean, I see a few cartoons yeah. that I would question <laughs> that try to tell false news. But I think in our culture, man, I, I don't see much of it. But as it opens up, I am greatly worried about this idea of, of uh, you know, bad storytelling. I mean, I, I, I don't know about you, uh, Gary, but uh, yeah. this, this, is a, this is an ethical and a moral issue, and as we uh, I just want our users to kind of be aware of the fact that they have a, a moral responsibility to tell the truth, and I don't mean like truth versus falsehood. You know, deeply rooted in their stuff is about measuring and representing information, and then you add that, uh, Jim, to the notion of, of, uh, of uh, you know, storytelling. Wow, it's, it's a powerful thing, but I, I'm a little nervous. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If, uh, if you are, Gary, but uh, it's something I want our users to th start thinking about because they're, they're, uh, they're in it. Well, I certainly agree with your concern. I would have to say, and I know that Jim would agree with this, Jack, uh, you need to be saluted for your, your concern about this, which is frankly unlike some of our colleagues in the northern part of California right now <laughs> who are stumbling along in this um, in the interest of making money. Um, and I think I think it's really important that you're showing this kind of leadership. I do think, uh, and perhaps the UC users have you know have not um, thought of themselves this way, but it's a digital army in some ways of people who are going to have to become have to have a digital driver's license here in uh, fact checking and calling out falsehoods and creating some set, sort of self-policing mechanism, it seems to me, if we are going to move to a, an era, Jim, where you know you could have falsehoods in maps, and there's no reason history shows us that that won't happen. So I think we are better to be prepared and thinking about this now. And I think this is a perfect challenge for, for the democracy of the users conference to come up with some really good ideas to try to figure out how we're going to tackle this issue ahead of time. Yeah, that's a great thought.
Uh, could, could I interrupt Jack and yeah. follow on that, that great point from, from Gary? This is my little moment of history <laughs> um, for, for the members of the user conference. So it was 66 zero years ago uh, this year that a man named Newton Minow, who was then in his 30s and is still alive and very, very active, was, the, was John F. Kennedy's commissioner of the Federal Communications Commission. And he delivered a really prescient speech about the promise of television and said this new technology, which was going to shape people's views of the world, could not turn into a vast wasteland. The potential to educate people could not, not be missed. And Newton Minow is, will be known to history for that warning and what he tried to do. There is no Newton Minow counterpart when it comes to social media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we see in which uh, there, there should have been somebody warning about this 20 years ago. I think it's worth underscoring what both Jack and, and Gary have said. Everybody who is part of this GIS community, everybody who is on this call and your friends, you have a really, really important civic and global mission to make sure that this power that is in your hands and that you're, you're trying to, uh, to, to spread even more wildly, widely to shape how we view the world that you use this this carefully. Jack, do you agree? <laughs> I totally agree. <laughs> I totally agree. And uh, look, it's a two-sided knife. Yeah. And I tend to go, go away from the negative. I just always yeah. do in my life. Uh, I, I don't know exactly why. It's one of my problems. But um, the positive side is shown very clearly in what we did with COVID, meaning we, the entire community. Yeah. John Hopkins started it with a map but it was replicated over 5,000 times. So every city, every county, every state, every nation made these maps and it changed the world. So the positive side of being able to geographically storytell effectively uh, changed the world's perception about how things happened. And uh, so I am concerned about putting mapping in the hands of everybody, uh, but at the same time, I understand the power that it could deliver. Yeah. You know, giving one uh, formula for being able to tell the truth in one geography, being able to replicate that with templates around the world, being able to inform the world yeah. like we did, I mean, like the community did just in a matter of weeks, uh, huge power. So I don't know, I'm a little bit mixed up here in my conversation, but I, I guess uh, I, I believe yeah. in the user community, I believe yeah. in the ethics that are there, but we need to, I guess, become more conscious, yeah. not only of the ethical duty of being able to tell the truth, but then also of the, um, the incredible power that uh, exists in these being able to make trillions of maps that change people's understanding of the world. We need to be able to learn how to explain better, yeah. you know, and, and uh, yeah, okay, there you go. Yeah. And, and, and Gary, you've been at one of the central institutions, again, for storytelling and people's understanding of the world, using words and pictures and maps and videos and all the rest. What have you learned or what advice would you have for the crucial segment of the world's GIS creator population is listening to this call about what they should do and what you have learned about you know, the maps that, that lead people in the right directions or perhaps the wrong directions? Well, we're at a critical moment, Jim, as we've talked about. I think the technology has exploded in the last decade, and each of you in the in the conference are, you know, sitting on immense amounts of human knowledge that, that really never existed before. I would say a couple things. One is education. I know Jack deeply believes in this. That's where we first met, actually, was around educating kids, and I yeah. think getting them more literate around maps, understanding these applications, and understanding false falsehoods and truth. I think that's a very important part. And each of you who are part of the Users Conference have so much to, to share with younger people. And I would urge you to do that um, as you, whether you're just out of college or whether you're, you know, towards retirement. I think it's a really important time to hand down those lessons to make sure that people understand wh what we're playing with here. And then, you know, the other thing is just having um, the one thing that National Geographic, which will always stick with me, and I, I've, I've mentioned this a couple times, is you know they, it wasn't photography wasn't just about photographing a writer's perspective. It was just as those video makers, Jim, interpreted your work um, that that played out brilliantly on HBO. Let's find ways where maps become the story, and then trigger photography yeah. and trigger text. And I think 
that that's where uh, that power now is sitting in this virtual room. And I think, um, you know, we have endless possibilities. Yeah. yeah this is Could I make an actual pitch and plea? Of course. So, one of my missions in journalism now, which as some of you may guess, I've been in for a long time. I've spent you know, 50 years of my life mainly writing things in books or magazines or, or online, is to teach my colleagues and the future generations how to be able to incorporate maps more easily, more naturally, more fluidly, the way they now do photos and the way they now do all the other uh, kind of technological expansions. And I am trying to make myself into a connector of people in your world, the GIS world, and people in my world of the, uh, the journalistic world. So if any of you want to write to me at, and uh, the best address is, um, you can find a site at ourtownsfoundation.org, uh, ourtownsfoundation.org. Uh, you'll find my email address there. We're trying to build as many of these sinews as we can to connect geographers who would like to be uh, involved with journalists on professional projects and journalists who are looking for this kind yeah, of help. Right. So uh, there need to be many clearinghouses. I would like to be one of them. I would like that very much, Jim. I, I think also I really want to leave this message with all of the listeners here. Uh, I want those who make maps to learn how to tell stories more, be more like uh, Jim's world. Now, you want journalists to get more involved in map making as a medium for storytelling. I want uh, the people who make the maps to be able to know that they are explaining things. Yeah. It isn't just making a map with pretty colors. Yeah. This is hugely, hugely important for the heart and soul of every GIS professional to understand the consequences of what they're doing, the consequences in, in helping the world understand things uh, more effectively. So. And, and I will call out, uh, I, you know, I agree with Jack, of course, and I'll call out the um, Living Atlas feature, which we're going to hear more about soon as something which can be a great repository for journalists. So, again, it's just densening, uh, making more dense the network of synapses, sinews, whatever biological <laughs> metaphor you, you, you would, would like. Um, so, so, Gary, what is the big takeaway summary message you would give to the GIS community from your experience in Nat, G Nat Geo? Well, you have, I think, a professional and a, and a moral responsibility, I think, um, to be thinking about consequences um, and the power that you have. As Jack said, let's tell stories. Let's use the power of maps to, to really uh, invigorate the public and to get them excited and understand the changes that need to happen in our world. Um, you have a lot of power at your fingertips. And then finding that in a way where there's a new citizenry around truth and around making sure that um, that we are able to uh, police, in effect, um, the the future of of interactive map making, um, powered, you know, at this conference, is something that uh, we all need to hold dearly. Uh, I, you have you are all in an amazing profession and uh, one in which most people would love to be in. And don't ever take that for granted. So um, again, responsibility, power, let's use it properly. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I have one last thing yeah. I'd yeah. like to say, is there's maps about the past, yeah. there's back, maps about current, yeah. there's also maps about the future. And that's one of the things I want people to dream about is creating a more sustainable future and telling that story uh, whether it's through geo design or telling us, well, all, all the things that we've been hearing about in the last two days. So, all right, we better call it quits, Jim, or we're over time. Uh, we, we can, but I will also say, I think all of us on this call these last few minutes have witnessed something historic. We have the leader of a very, very important industry having a call to action to people in this industry. I think this really matters.